Welcome to Sports Beat KC, presented by Big O Tires. It's Tuesday, January 28th, and I'm your host, Blair Kirkhoff. We're in Miami at the Super Bowl with the Chiefs, and Monday was opening night. It used to be called Media Day, but it's become such a spectacle that Media Day just doesn't quite fit. Fans are invited to watch from the stands, Marlins Park in this case. Some fans interact with the players. The Stars A team of Herbie Teope, Sam McDowell, Vahe Gregorian, and Sam Mellinger discuss what they saw and heard. And after a break, you'll hear from a handful of players. We picked out some of the most revealing quotes from opening night. So here we go. All right, gentlemen, what was the what was the strangest thing you saw tonight on opening night at the Super Bowl? I got a list here. I just want to see if <laughs> if, if it's uh, if, if yours okay, are the, on my list. The best thing was the Andy Reid, <laughs> the pump pat, <laughs> pump pass and kick. That, well, that was what I was going like, to say. The best. I mean, it right? was also weird, right? But he was he was big dude, yeah. right? <laughs> but that's the first like of the like clown show. You know, costume kind of thing. I was like, you know what? I like that guy. Well, you know, the best part of it was he went to the trouble of having Reed's name misspelled on the back of the jersey. As it was on Monday Night Football. As it was. And it was number 34, which I believe the history is it actually was Les Josephson's jersey that they had to take out because Andy was so big. It was an actual Rams jersey. I hope you'll read uh, Pete Gradhoff and Katie Bernard have written about all this and go to the Stars website to... To read about the craziness, Herbie, you've covered multiple Super Super Bowls. Is this one about what you'd expect? It, it, it is about what you expect. And then as soon as you walked in there, and I knew we were in the world of wackiness, I go over to Tyreek Hill's podium, and I step on a fishing pole. And I look down, and I'm like, a fishing pole? Why am I stepping on a fishing pole? And I turn around, and there's a reporter, and I'm using air quotes here, a reporter there dressed up like, I guess, like a captain, a sea captain or whatever. And the gig was, you know, cast out the reel and then asked a question once the player caught whatever it was they were going to catch. And I was like, good God, here we go. Here we go. <laughs> Legitimacy just goes out the window. But hey, they're having fun. You know, they're, I guess that's the whole point of it. And fans get to watch us and listen to us ask questions. So People what? paid for this too. I think. Yeah, people paid for this. <laughs> One thing I did enjoy: there was a reporter from like some like ad magazine or whatever, and he was like, "I'm asking all these uh, athletes like how they feel about like brands reaching out to them and commercials and everything." And this was for Daniel Sorensen, who's a fine guy, not on a lot of billboards. <laughs> so, <laughs> it's just these questions were getting lobbed about like which brands reach out to you. He's like, none. And like, you know, like, how do you want brands to reach out? He's like, I really don't. Like, I mean, it's just, and he's probably answering just like that. Yeah, too. Yeah, that's just what's great. There was some some guy trying to get Andy Reid to answer a question between two snacks that obviously he was promoting. Like, which is your favorite snack? And Andy just sort of shut him down and said, "Well, peanut butter M and M's." Like, he wouldn't accept he wouldn't accept either of the choices. <laughs> they may not use it. Um, it's just nothing surprises you when you, when you go. It's, it's, nothing. Just, it's just such a and Herbie. I mean, it's my first Super Bowl. Herbie warned me about it, but it's just the array of questions. It's not journalism's finest hour. <laughs> uh, well, it doesn't even try to be right. I mean, at this point, it's it's understood to be you know clown show thing, right? But what is what's the criteria for who they credential? There's six thousand of us. Here. <laughs> <laughs> a request. Clearly, anyone. I mean, you had Dancing with the Stars. That well, you, you I, call it at. I, I walked into a um, an Inside Edition uh, <laughs> on-air talent. You're going to be on TV? Dancing with Byron Pringle and, uh, you know, giving him a lesson, a dance lesson. I just backed into that. <laughs> I ended, ended up in the video. <laughs> um, it, it's funny because um, Zach Gilbert, who works with the league, he, he was over there with with Tyreek Hill and, and he, he kind of like leaned over to me and he mentioned to me gotta hope nobody pulls out a guitar and serenades the head coach in, in, in reference to what happened last year a, a, a reporter pulled out a guitar and was singing to Bill Belichick and they had to escort him out but it's, <laughs> that's the whole that is the whole point of it they're all having fun and, and Sam is correct you know a lot of the questions are not journalistic in nature it has nothing to do with football and you have to fight with all that though if 
you have a legit question. And nothing to do with journalism, really. I mean, it is kind of not not to be the, the gruff old man here, but I mean, it's kind of just just an entertainment night. I mean, I you know, although we are actually trying to extract real answers to, to real yeah, questions. Some of us are trying to write stories. <laughs> well, they did keep the the dozen or so players at a podium for an hour and so they had to they did have to take some legitimate questions along with some silly ones i i went back and listened to some of the audio and heard travis kelsey ask and you'll hear this later because i i I, uh, saved it um who he knew who the oscar finalists were this year Holmes was asked as well uh, so i guess somebody was going around asking everybody questions like that and uh just strange things just just odd but but i think did kelsey get any because Mahomes got zero no but kelsey did know uh who the other person besides jennifer lopez was uh performing at halftime Mahomes knew that one as well okay so um so good, good on that. For, for <laughs> I, I bet um, staying Dave, up on pop culture. I bet Dave Tobe would know that. Uh, um, <laughs> I did. I also saw um, a guy who was teaching card tricks to Chiefs players, including Alex Brown. So he's and these guys were mesmerized by the card tricks. But, was there a guy walking around with Rock'em Sock'em robots too? Yes. yes. What was he doing with those? First of all, Alex Brown had to be pumped for that. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I interrupted that point. No, but so, yeah. he well, um, he, he took that up, the Rock'em Sock'em Robot game to the podium. Some of the players were actually playing it up at the podium. <laughs> so I guess he's promoting, you know, a toy that was around when I was a kid. You know, <laughs> wonder where the yo-yo guy was, or the silly putty guy, or the slinky guy. The slinky, <laughs> slinky, slinky. <laughs> Such a wonderful so, toy. So, did we get anything out of this tonight? Um, just knowledge-wise, did we learn anything about the Chiefs? Got some hamburger helper, <laughs> as we like to say. We not a lot. Of, <laughs> got not a lot of steak. <laughs> But uh, look, I think some people were kind of interesting, for sure, and, and uh, we we did our best to get around as many places as we could. I I thought Andy Reid was pretty loose, and uh, but also informative to some degree on, on some things we're working on. I, I thought he was he was, he showed a side of himself, and um, I stayed there the whole time with Andy actually, and then and I did get with D Ford for about a half hour, and I thought D Ford was pretty good when the 49ers came up. Um, how'd you guys do? Story building. I think, I think the silence tells you everything. <laughs> I, I, I think, like, when you walk into the opening night, and it, it, because you have so much access, you got to start building your stories for later on in the week. And I know all all five of us have a lot of good stories or quality stories, unlike opening night that you're going to read about. We got some good stuff on tap here. I think what really struck me, and I hate to go somber here, but. I, the moment of silence when we walked yeah, in there, you know, yeah. we're, we're dealing with a lot of athletes who are still reeling from the shock of, of Kobe Bryant's mm-hmm. death. And a lot of the Chiefs players talked about it. But in fact, just from hearing a lot of the questions, it, it seemed like that was always the first one asked. Not necessarily from us, but from a lot of the other media people. You know, what was your reaction? Where were you when you heard about Kobe Bryant's death? And, and the Chiefs all found out as they were flying in uh, Frank Clark. You were over there with him, but I know he had he had some pretty compelling stuff. There. You know, he turned off his phone. He didn't want to believe it. Closed his eyes, laid down on the plane, and then finally Chris Jones came over and told him, "Hey, it's it's true." And but it's we're dealing with a lot of players who idolized him. A lot of the Chiefs players, as we know from being in that locker room, love basketball. Uh, Colin Sanders says, "Hey, that was that was a tough one to take." You know, just dealing with that. It did seem to be the sort of the news of the day that that. Because uh, yeah. every every interview that I listened back to included several questions. Yeah, Mom's was asked about it more often. That this is one of the natures of the setup of being up there for sixty minutes is the the audience rotates. Although Bobby hung around Andy Reid, I never loved Patrick Mahomes from, um, and he I think he was asked about it nine or ten times about Kobe Bryant. He said he used to. Idolized him as a kid, like I'm sure a lot, like Herbie mentioned, a lot of those guys did. Um, and still, to this day, we'll watch videos of Kobe Bryant the day before he plays a game. Hmm. Yeah, and it's not basketball videos, it's like a lot of his speeches and stuff he just finds inspiring. The Kobe chant after the moment the silence ended was what, what hit me. I was like, wow. Steve. Yeah. Look, this, you know, this, this happened the day before, right? This happened Sunday. The crash happened Sunday morning, afternoon Eastern time. 
And so it is fresh in everybody's everybody's memory. So, yeah, I, I um, you'll hear Frank Clark uh, after we come back from a break. You'll hear what Frank Clark had to say about uh, growing up in South Central L.A. and what Kobe Bryant meant to him. You're also going to hear from uh, let me see if I got the list right: uh, Tyreek Hill and Travis Kelsey, uh, Sammy Watkins, and uh, wrapping it up will be Chris Jones who, let's just say, was revealing (laughs) in his comments. We'll leave it at that. All right, guys, we'll see you tomorrow. If your steering wheel has more traction than your actual tires, that's a big oh no. Thankfully, for all your car's big oh no's, there's always a big oh yes. Now through February 2nd, buy three, get one free on select sets of four Aspen Touring AS or Mesa AP2 brand tires with paid installation purchase. Big O Tires, the team you trust. Disposal fees extra and up to 10% shop fee based on non-discounted regular retail price not to exceed $35 were permitted. See store for pricing. Eligibility may vary. Not valid with other offers. At participating locations, no cash value. Hey, it's Blair. Hey, we have a special subscription offer for Sportsbeat KC listeners. Unlimited digital access to the Kansas City Star's award-winning sports coverage. Sign up now for one year of Sports Pass for access to all the sports news, features, and columns we have to offer. And it's only $30. That's a 40% savings off our regular rate. For your convenience, your subscription will automatically renew after the initial term at $50 unless you tell us to cancel. A lot of subscription services won't tell you that. They'll just sneak it on there. We just told you. Your subscription helps support the sports coverage of KansasCity.com and the Kansas City Star. Please visit KansasCity.com slash SportsBeatKC offer to get this special offer. And as always, thanks for listening. Welcome back to SportsBeatKC. As I was saying, you're going to hear from five Chiefs players, starting with Frank Clark. He talks about playing with swag and gives us his thoughts about growing up in Los Angeles as a Kobe Bryant fan. Kobe's death on Sunday was a big topic on opening night. Next, we'll hear from Tyreek Hill on what a successful Super Bowl would mean to him. Then he talks about something he hasn't addressed, at least to my knowledge, the contract extension he signed earlier this year. Herbie Teope asked Hill about that. Travis Kelsey tells us what it was like to watch his brother win a Super Bowl with the Philadelphia Eagles two years ago. And through Kelsey, we give you a glimpse of some of the non-sports questions the players were asked on opening night. Sammy Watkins speak to how much he enjoys playing football without the pressure of carrying the receiving core. And finally, Chris Jones provides our final thought. Chris was asked about a wardrobe malfunction at the NFL Combine a few years ago that left him, well, exposed. His response is why he's one of the funniest and most engaging players on the team, in addition to being one of the best. So first up is Frank Clark. I feel like in this sport sometimes, you know, we, we, it's ca- so many cameras in front of us and there's so much going on, you know, that guys get a- away from being themselves and being real. I think when you're real, you know, people appreciate that more. I feel like you guys can appreciate that much more. You know, you can get a feel for a guy much more. And um, that's the one thing that Coach wants, uh, you know, out of us. He wants us to be real, you know, and just show our true colors and show ourselves. You know, why not, you know, at the end of the day? I feel like we got the most swag um, in the NFL, for sure. Most swag, championship swagger. That's all we, that's all we about, championship swagger. Football first, swag second. It was Kobe Bryant. Um, anybody that tell you who knows me, my mom, my mother will tell you, you know, my idol pictures. Anything, anything about Kobe Bryant, Black Mama Bean, eight twenty four. Um, anything about him, I, I fell in love with. I mean, from from his drive, you know, to to, to how, how passionate he was about his work ethic. I based a lot of things off off of him. Um, I got a lot of his books. I got, I could say, every book almost he's 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 had. Um, he's one of my biggest idols, you know, growing up in Los Angeles, inner city, South Central, you know, um, you don't got a lot to lean on. You don't got a lot to look forward to his gangs, you know, and that's really it, gangs and drugs. And the one thing, one person, if anything, I look to, you know, for inspiration and for all my strength growing up, you know, when, when I was going through the things I was going through was Kobe Bryant. I mean, he was a successful guy, you know, and, and that's the one thing you look to, you know, you look at gangs, you look at the drug dealers, then you look at the guys who are successful and the athletes and Kobe Bryant being one of those guys, um, you know, around me, he was winning championships, him and Big Shaq, you know, this we talking about the early 2000s, LA was on fire, baby. 
that was on fire. It's very important. You know, um, <clears throat> I feel like this game right here is where you leave a legacy at. Like, if you want to be remembered by people, if you want to be remembered, you know what I'm saying, whether it's good or bad, I feel like this is the game. Like, this is the time where, where the media is here. Like, everybody's watching. The whole entire, entire world is watching. So, this is where... This game right here is where you separate yourself from a lot of players. Like, a lot of people say, oh, I want to be the best receiver in the league. Oh, I want to be this. I want to be that. Well, here's your chance to prove it. You want to be the best? Prove it, man, on the biggest stage in the world. For the Chiefs to give me that amount of money, you know what I'm saying, I'm truly blessed. All right, like, I thank them for that. I thank Clark Hunt. I thank Coach Reed for this opportunity. You know what I'm saying? Um, I thank Brett Veach for this opportunity. You know what I'm saying? And, and I would never let those guys down. I never let my family down, man. Cause I want to, like, like I want to keep getting those extensions. You know what I'm saying? Cause that kind of felt good. I ain't gonna cap. It felt good for a minute. You know. And I love being in KC. I love the fans. I love the support. You know um, that they give us. And then Arrowhead is just amazing. Just playing in, in, in Arrowhead is crazy. Oh, I just took that time and just. I, I was just picking my son up for school then, so it was it was like a win-win for me, you know? I mean, I was kind of sad about it, but again, like I, made, like, I made some light out of it. I was like, you know what? I'm going to use this time, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just start picking my son up from school. Cool. My son was like, Dad, hey, you picking me up? Now, I see, look, now my son be looking for me every day. Now, like, Dad, where you at, man? Like, you used to pick me up. I'm like, son, I'm not hurt no more. I can't pick you up. I can't. You so? You I don't know, man. Life is too short for all this, for all this crazy stuff, man. So I just feel like my kids are the most important thing for me, and they, and my kids are, and my kids, and my kids are the one who's gonna carry on my legacy, you know. So first, I gotta leave a good legacy for my kids to carry on. So that's why I gotta do everything I can to stay in their life and raise them the right way and love on them and love my babies, man, especially my daughter. I was out there in Minnesota. Is it? It was um it was a very unique situation because I got to see it almost secondhand, and uh, and really kind of in the background of the Eagles asking my brother everything that was going on that week, and uh, you know it was it was unique how tight of a team they were how the, how their chemistry they just felt like they were a brotherhood even from the outside in uh, it, you could just tell how how tight knit that group was and um, with that being said I think this team is the exact same feeling going into it how much we appreciate each other. And, and have fun on the field with each other and you know, make sure we're doing the right thing so we're accountable for each other. Can you name four of the current Oscar nominees? No, I cannot. <laughs> I've been a little busy. Um, besides J-Lo, which Latina star is performing at the Super Bowl? Is it, ah, what is her name? I know, ah, Shakira? Also, Brad is Nice. I'm a huge Brad Pitt fan. There we go. Tell Brad I said hello. Brad, we're getting, we're going after him for you. I'm not the number one guy that everybody's looking for or targeting. We have, I think, about seven or eight superstars on the team. So I can literally go out there and have fun and play. And um, I think that's the best part of, of, of my career now. It, it, everything is not on me. I can just literally um, run my routes and, you know, when the ball comes to me, make the best of my opportunities. Um, for sure, when I was young, you know, I wanted the ball. Give me the ball. Um, I want the ball every play. Um, and I think, you know, I was on probably one of the worst teams ever. Um, when you get in the ball every play, um, most likely you're freaking losing. Um, and I think now I'm in the best situation to where I, um, I'm healthy. Um, I'm in the Super Bowl. And um, I don't have to depend on myself. I have a lot of other guys that, that can um, go out there and make plays. Oh, it was amazing. Uh, it was amazing. Um, I kind of dropped the mic. Um, but, uh, uh, um, you know what, uh, when it happened, um, everybody was like, oh, my God, I feel sorry for you. And I was like, it couldn't have happened to a better guy. Um, I was made for the moment. I, I, um, I killed the moment. Uh, and one thing I got to say, man, whatever you do, do it balls out. <laughs> you still hear about it to this day? One thousand percent. No problem. That'll do it from our first full day in Miami. We have some great shows planned for you this week, so please tune in every day to get the most comprehensive discussion of the Chiefs 
and the Super Bowl. Links to our coverage from the Super Bowl can be found in the show notes on KansasCity.com and the Red Zone Extra app. Thanks to Derek Donovan, who worked late into the night yesterday to produce the show. We'll be back on Wednesday for another episode of Sports BKC, where we talk sports in Kansas City, even when a team is in Miami, every day. Thanks for tuning in.